Here's a list of the top nine canvas sizes that I compiled from six different brands of canvases. I created this graphic so you can see what they look like hanging on your wall. You get a sense of the scale just because there's a sofa in the room. You kind of get an idea how big it would be if you hung that in your living room. In this video, I'll describe why I think you should use common canvas sizes and what the advantages are. So what are the benefits of using common canvas sizes? And I think the biggest one is picture framing. I have this eight by 10 canvas, and if you were to frame it at a picture framing shop, it would probably cost one to two hundred dollars to have this framed in a wood frame but i bought this frame for thirty dollars an eight by ten canvas will slide right into there and to secure it in the back you just drive a few points into the side of the frame i demonstrate that in two videos one of them is how to frame canvas panels and then i do it again in the video about how to assemble wood frames like this this looks professional it's not that hard to put together and you could even buy frames that are already assembled like that's why i recommend Using common canvas sizes is because you can go buy an 8x10 frame at a craft supply store. Within an hour, you'll have something that's, you know, looks like it's professionally framed and you just saved yourself like $100. So my point is, if you stick to standard canvas sizes, you can just buy a frame for $20 or $30 and save all that money. So when you sell it, you can keep more of the profit. Another way to frame your canvases is if you have wood panels that are cradled like this. And cradle just means there's wood strips along the back to make it more stable and it gives it like a traditional edge like a canvas. One way to frame those is to buy floater frames. And I bought this from an art supply store. I think it was like maybe $25. And all you do is just drop it in the frame. So there's holes in the back. You just put a couple of screws in there to hold it securely in the frame. And then you could just put some picture hanging wire on the back. I have a video about how to tie knots in picture hanging wire and it shows you how to secure a wire to the back of the frame. And there you go, you have a professionally looking framed painting that's ready to hang. Here's another frame painting that I framed myself, and I bought these in wood sections. This is the one I put together in the video about assembling wood frames. It didn't take very long to put it together. There's only four points that hold the, the canvas panel inside the frame, and then it's just a wire and some hooks, and it's all ready to go. When you're planning out a painting, you should consider the aspect ratio of the canvas you're going to use. Now, aspect ratio sounds like a complicated term, but it's pretty basic. If you think about eating a pizza, you wouldn't say I ate four eighths of a pizza, you would say I ate one half. And I could take a canvas like this 16 by 20, and you could reduce that down to four by five. I know most artists don't like to do math, so I created a PDF that you can download from my website. So what I did in this list is I highlighted all the different sizes that canvases come in. And then the ones in yellow are the most common ones. So you could just take a quick look at this and sort of get an idea of if you use this aspect ratio, what canvas sizes are readily available. Now you could build your own canvases, which I don't recommend because it takes time away from painting. And there's so many quality canvases available online. I don't know why you would take the time to do that. Unless you thoroughly enjoy the process, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make them yourself. So if you look at this list, you can determine what canvases are available for the reference material you're working from. It could be a sketch that you're working from, or if you're using a photograph, most of the DSLRs have like a two by three aspect ratio and less expensive like point and shoots usually have a four by three aspect ratio. Now it doesn't really matter if it doesn't really suit your needs because you could just crop the photograph to whatever aspect ratio that you want. And you could do that in photo editing software. You just select the cropping tool. And then usually there's like a drop down menu that has like custom size or specific aspect ratio and you could just enter that in there and then crop it down to whatever you want. I prefer the four by five aspect ratio because it gives me a lot of options. And that brings me to my next point, which is having your paintings made into prints. If you want to support my channel, there's an option to purchase a super thanks right below the video. You can choose the amount that you want and your comment will be highlighted with a color. If you're interested in making prints from your paintings and even if you're not interested now, you might be in the future. Prints are a way to make more money from each painting and offering prints also allows more people to collect your artwork. Not everyone has the budget to buy original artwork because it's, it's fairly expensive, but prints are much more affordable. You'll be able to sell more of them and supplement your income. So what does the canvas size have to do with making prints? Well, it makes things a whole lot easier. Here's a print that I had made of an eight by 10 painting that I did. I ordered this pre-cut mat board online and I also bought the bags online too. So all I had to do was take my print, put it in this mat board, and then insert the whole package into this bag. 
and have a print that's ready to sell. Now compare that to a custom size painting, like a 10 by 30, like a panoramic print that's this wide. You'd have to cut this mat board yourself. You probably could even find a bag to put it in. And you might not even bother with having prints made because it's just, there's so much labor involved, the profit margin might not be high enough. All the points that I made about framing also applies to prints. This will fit into 11 by 14 frame that I just can buy at a art supply store. And this will fit into an eight by 10 frame. So I can sell these prints either unframed or framed, and it doesn't really take me that much more work. I just go and order these frames online. I order these mat boards online, and it's just a matter of assembling everything. That's so much faster than having to cut your own mat board and having picture frames made. The size of the canvas that you select has an impact on the cost of the shipping. So larger paintings usually cost more, and if they're heavier, they cost more to ship. I like to stick to smaller paintings for shipping them and selling them online. Like eight by 10 is pretty good. You could fit that into a padded envelope. Uh, once you get into larger paintings, you have to charge much more for shipping because it just requires so much more material. So it's just one more thing to consider when you're selecting canvases, especially if you sell them online.